Okay, so enums. An enum is a short for enumerator, enumerated list. An enumerated list is simply another way to say a numbered list. You're gonna use enums quite a bit. Uh, enums are helpful in a way that they let us create a nice label or description for something while still using numbers as values. Uh, below we have an enum called movie ratings. The list has choices of terrible, bad, okay, pretty good, really good, great, and best movie ever. Secretly behind the scenes, the enum assigns a numerical value to each item on the list. For example, pretty good has a value of three. Terrible has a value of zero. Enums are a helpful way to, in that they make our code friendly to read. Instead of writing if rating is equal to three, we can write if rating is equal to movie rating dot pretty good. Creating an enum. I think you get a little bit more uh, into more than enum, right? So you, you get to talk about, uh, you could chart out, do some charting, do some tables. Um, so class program, you have your enum ratings. Here you have inside what's your, your movie ratings from zero to six, static, void, main. Here's your method, strings, uh, bracket, args, const.write line, movie ratings that pretty good. And then pretty good will probably be equal to three. Compare these two pieces of code and you decide which one is easier to understand. So here you're just using an if statement. If is equal to movie.ray is equal to terrible, then go ahead and write this is a terrible movie. So in another one here, if movie rating is equal to one, then it's just what does a rating of one mean? So here, um, there's no value, right, for one. Um, so that, that's just, an enum is just a way of just telling you that, you know, it's, you can have a, a, a value, a meaning to that number. When an enum is created, it becomes its own data type. When we create the enum list, we declare it as an enum movie ratings. But when we go to use the enum, we type movie ratings value because movie rating is now its own data type. The only thing to mention about enum is where we place them in the code. Look carefully again at the creation of enum. You see, this is the very first piece of code we create outside of the main code block. If we try to create the enum inside of a main, we'll get an error. The enum has to be defined outside of the curly brace blocks of main. To explain exactly why this is is, we need to talk about object-oriented programming. However, trying to answer this question right now before we dive into OOP is going to sidetrack us. So for today, let's be aware and pay attention that we are starting to use space outside of the main, that this space behaves differently from space inside of the main encode block. Enums are just a first example of this. In the next class, we'll begin to tackle the concept of OOP. So make a mental note about enums, and now we'll circle back around to why they live outside of main. So, when it comes to OOP, pay careful attention to this. Okay, so class program, code outside of the main um, code block. So here you have your enum movie ratings, and then you have your struct actor. Here you have your public integer actor ID, string, first name, last name. So this is kind of more like uh, a SQL database, right? And here you have your static void main, your method, here you just have whatever you gotta do. So if movie ratings is equal to movie ratings are terrible, um, and here you move down on terrible, ratings equal terrible, go ahead and write the worst movie uh, I've seen. Else if you have, you've seen the best movie. And then else if, again, if you want, you could do, uh, this movie, I don't really care. Don't, there's nothing, I have, uh, if it's good or bad, right? So 5.2 lab, lab enum task list. So in this lab, we're going to improve the task list system by using enums. This code will do the same thing as the code we wrote in the previous lesson, but it will use enums and instead of lists, instead of using arrays. Uh, the goal of this, of this lab is to help you practice enums and to show you there is no way to solve a problem. So follow along on your own to step so the steps shown below to complete the lab. Number one, start by creating an enum. Remember that you must do this above the main code. So your main is always gonna be your whole program. Right? You can't have more than one main. Code block, unless you could, unless you know how to work 
you know working program go ahead and connect it to code block trying to create this inside of, will give you an error this enum will represent the days of the week so public enum weekdays monday to sunday um so here it just shows you the whole days inside the main code block let's create a list of strings to represent our list of task items so here you have your list inside your list you have your string task list is equal to a new list string so here you go make a new list string now that the next step is to loop through all the values in the enum offering the user a chance to assign a task to the day to to do this we have to use a special function called enum.getValues. so remember this keyword this will get all of our values from our enums so if you when you dot get dot get right here values that means you're just going to get all the values from the enum after getting each enum value and put getting input from the user we add the task to our list so for each weekdays in an enum dot get values type of weekdays console dot write line here you're just gonna write the line um enter new task plus day right so you're just gonna add concatenate day in here string task is equal to day plus and you're gonna concatenate the semicolon plus console dot read line here you're gonna you have a read line um console out task list dot add task so like what i said you could add a read line in here and this is what it's gonna do Okay, let my let my thing load up real quick. Okay, let's get back into. Uh... Finally, all that is left is to print each task from the list. So if you want, you could just put here for to print all the tasks. You put for each string task in the task list. Console dot write line task inside the task. So it will go ahead and write all the task list. All right. So here's all your task list. These are your weekdays. Okay, running the code should give an output like this. Enter a new task for Monday. Go to work. Go to school. Study C sharp. Make dinner. So this is a good way to make a task on your console, right? And then you could go ahead and start doing the um, the user uh, interface, which would just be, you know, something like a calendar. Uh, to view the solution, view the five five two salute lab solution project on your GitHub. Okay, so like I said about earlier, about that right right line and read line. So here you could do something like this. So if you want, you could type in console dot right, and then end it off. And then you could put console dot read line. So we could build it. Let's go see if it gives us an error. Oh, we can't do the error. I gotta do this. There you go. Oh. How do I get them to prompt a user? So here, read line will just read the line and keep it on the console until uh, until you exit, right? So to exit, you could just put Control C, and then I'll stop, and then you just close the window, and then to prompt the user, I think it's on our old. You guys know how to prompt uh, to the console dot write? Is it console dot write? Uh, console dot write line, I think. Console dot write, and that that prompt the um, user to write anything inside the the console. Yes, that'll do that. Okay, and then Control C, and then you could press any key to exit. All right, so that's gonna be. Oh, I accidentally exit that out. So five two lab. Let's talk about. Um, your structure five three structs sometimes it's really helpful to group data together there are things that we can't just represent using simple data types like strings and numbers in order to represent more complex data we use struct 
which is short for structure or data structure. Structure allows the model more complex data. Like an enum, a struct must be created outside of the main block. So here, this is very important. Here you have your structure actor. So here's gonna be your actor, right? Your parent, and then from here, you're gonna have uh, your actor ID, your first name, last name, and then here, you have your uh, date time last updated so this is just always going to be automatically updated so in the actor data structure we bundle together four piece of data including an integer two strings and a timestamp we have a piece of data that looks remarkably like it could be a sql record from secure database just like the enum this struct is defined outside of the main block main code block inside of main we could, could create specific new actor data so creating a new actor in main so here in your main, you have actor great actor equals new actor. So here you're gonna start it off. Uh, great actor dot actor ID is equal to one. First name Steve, last name McQueen. Uh, great actor dot last update equals date time dot now. So another option for creating the actor data structure looks like this again inside the main actor bad actor equal new actor. Uh, actor ID equals two. First name last name. Tommy, how you say the last name? Uh, Wisu, Wisau, I don't know how to say that last name. Uh, last update equals date time dot now. I think I'm mispronouncing. Anybody know how to pronounce this last name right here? Wizzle. Is it Wizzle? No idea. No idea. Okay. The takeaway for our structure are. Number one allows us to bundle together a lot of data into one nice package of data. Uh, number two, the structure becomes its own data type. Number three, we create an individual structure with the with the syntax data type variable name equal new data type, where data type is what we name our structure when defining it. Number four, we define our structure outside of the main code block. Number five, we can access the individual elements of a structure by writing variable dot property name. All right, so go ahead and view the files on lesson5project.github. Um, so if I was you guys, right, uh, you know, I'll, I'll go on there and I'll just write it a whole thing out. Uh, lab creating Mario. In this lab, we'll represent the video game character Mario as a structs as a way to as a way to start thinking about how complex data is created. So here you could just you know, you guys have Unity downloaded. You know, this is going to definitely do a lot of. Um, you know, C-sharp um, coding. And here you could like do a lot of game development. So I haven't updated this. It's like a 2018 type of software. I, mean, I haven't messed with this in a long time. Um, it's gonna ask me to do, do a big update, I know it. So I got you gotta sign in, get your license, my profile and create, right? So if I was you guys, if you guys wanna start coding in C-sharp, download Unity uh, and test, test, test out the gaming. Um, you know, go ahead and mess around with 2D and 3D platform. So Super Mario Bros, number one, we need to begin by thinking of all, all of these things that Mario might need. Let's start making a list. All right, so Mario's gonna need the number of lives. He's gonna need his uh, money. He's gonna know, he gotta know what stage he's on. What, what, when he eat that mushroom, is he small or big? Can he shoot a fireball? And is he able to jump? All right, now let's go ahead and now this 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 is what goes behind the coding when you're actually coding, right? Now let's start this into a struct. This code is written above the main code block. Do not place it inside of it. So here you have your public struct. So here this is going to be everything that you're able to uh, customize. So public enum size, right? You could have it small, large. Uh, huge giant don't uh, or something like that public integer number of lives uh, public string current level public size size of Mario public bull can he sh so here's you going just gonna have one or two so that's why you use bull and then public integer number of coins right so we need to know how how can the uh, coins can increment or decrement uh, don't worry just about using the word public keyword we'll discuss that in detail in future lesson and, and on op we'll create an enum called size it's just for slides a string for the current level and we're tracking if Mario is jumping and can shoot his fireballs 
So anybody here has any idea what public or uh, public is or private is? Kind of simple, right? When you think about public and private, right? No one, no one has an idea about public or uh, private. And don't, don't Google it. I don't want to see no googling. All right, all right. So public is what everything you're able to customize out in the public, so you're able to see. Private is the opposite, right? Now in the main code block, let's create Mario and give him some default values. So here's just gonna have some default values already that's already gonna be placed in. So here it's gonna have uh, static void main strings, uh, square bracket args. Mario's, this is gonna be a new Mario, number of lives, you gonna have three, current level, you know, string, world one, size of Mario, Mario.size.small, so it's definitely gonna pull that from a small. Mario can shoot fireball, this is gonna be a bull, boolean, faults, and then same thing over here, is he jumping faults. So let's play some Mario in C sharp, open the five for a lap starter, read through the code, change the value as Mario's director as he moves through the level. So here you just open this up, right? And here I'm gonna make a, a new project, create a new project. How's your Visual Studio on your laptop? Is, is it like fast or slow? You know what I mean? It feels all right. It feels all right. So console.app.core, yeah, let's call, call this Mario. I'm gonna call it Super Mario to make it like, to make, cause it's Super Mario. So I'll call it Super Mario, create a new project. So, so this first thing is gonna load is using system namespace Super Mario class program, uh, console.write line, hello world. So here, go ahead and just move this to the left, move this to the right. So here you have using the system namespace. Uh, soup, you could name this uh, Super Mario Five Lab Starter class program. And then here it doesn't have static void main. Instead of that, it has pet public struct Mario. So I'll just delete this and just type in public struct Mario, right? And then here you're gonna have your enum size public public enum size open brace and here you're going to either have small or uh, I'm just gonna have small or large just have it at the same and then close it and then in here you're gonna have you're gonna still have an open uh, bracket from here so this is just telling you from this part space it out um, yeah, I'll have it right here. Public integer num of lives. And then, you know, you can just keep uh, typing forward, right? So public string current level. End it off with a uh, semicolon. Public size. So see, size is actually a keyword. keyword. And then here you just type in size of Mario. Be careful not to type in the, the correct keyword in there, so because that'll definitely mess it up. And right, now you're gonna use public bull. Can you shoot fireballs? You know, can so can shoot fireballs. Public bull again. Uh, is jumping. And then public int num of coins right okay so so now I got all of that in there let's go ahead and space this right here so it actually uh, no let's go see how, how I want it okay I'll, I'll leave it right here so it just shows that this would be this part so okay so that's just gonna be your public e enum size so Start off writing like that and do it for the rest of the, the coding. And uh, let's go ahead and talk about your 5.3. Oh, 
five five. Your if then else statement. So you know your if and then and else statements would just be like uh no if this condition is met then run it if not then do another condition. If then else is another aspect of flow control allowing us to run a code of block only if a certain condition is true. If then statements are powerful allowing us to take various branch of action depending on what it needs to happen next. So. This is definitely true. You're going to see a lot of if, right? You're uh, definitely going to see a lot of if in the code. And uh, when you see that, that just means is it if this is met in this function, then you would know what's going on. If then else statements say if some condition is true, then do then go do this. Else if it wasn't true, then go and do that instead. If else if statements say if some condition is true, then go do this, but if it was false, then go check the second condition. If the second condition is true, then go do that. Then if the second condition is not true, then it doesn't run, right? If then, so here, this is how you start. If, right, it's going to condit, check this state. Else, uh, if, if it's yes, then statements, no. Go ahead and go into the next line of code. When a basic... With the basic if statement and condition is checked, if the condition is true, the code in the, the then block will then will run. If it's false, then the next line of code runs like normal. So movie ratings equals terrible. If rating is terrible, then it, if it's terrible, then it's worst movie ever seen. Console write the uh, the statement after the if will always run. If the rating is equal to terrible, then print worst movie I've ever seen. Right, so if it's if you don't sh show like if it's is good and you didn't write an if statement there, then it's definitely it's you know it won't run. We can test multiple conditions using and the C sharp symbol and for and is and. So this is just another way of saying that if both condition is met, then go ahead and follow. If one is not, then then it doesn't go. If the movie is terrible. And the actor is Tommy. I'm not, I'm not gonna say that. Then run the statement in the block. We know which movie you are watching. We can test condition with or the C sharp symbol for or is that long line symbol from that backspace. So here, doing it again. If rating is equal to movie ratings are terrible or ratings equal ratings are moving bad. So it's just saying if one of these are true. Constant right line. I can't recommend this movie. So, you know, either if this is true or this is true, then you know, they're both the same anyways. So, not terrible and not bad. If the movie is terrible or the movie is bad, don't recommend the movie to your friends. So then you have your if then the, uh, else, right? So else now you add else. You just uh, it's more like an else just like re rechecks the conditions or. Not rechecks, but like go ahead and like continue to the next condition. So like start if true, then statements, then the next line of code. If else, else statements, the next line of code. So if you have a if else, uh, go ahead to this line. Uh, if then else is a condition will be tested. If it's true, the code and the block will run. If it's not true, the code and the else block will run. So here's a good example. So let's just say if, if the movie rating is terrible, write this line. If it's not terrible, right, then it goes to this line right here. If it wasn't terrible, then 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 this this should write a console line, a console write line, this thing will after the if will always run. So this is if it's not this, then it, it wasn't terrible. Uh, if the rating was terrible, It'll say the worst movie I've seen, but if it wasn't true, instead the movie wasn't terrible. So here you have a lot of if else. Start if true, then statement if false, true if false again. You know, so this is what I mean: if false, false, false. So you can have a lot of else, but you know, you know, you don't really use that much um, else if and else, right? You just you just recondit check it. With if else if else the first condition check if it's true then the statement will execute. No other condition condition will be checked and the next line of code runs. However, the first condition is false. The next condition in the else if, if the block will check. 
this pattern will repeat for uh, each else if condition. If the none of the else of the conditions are true and the else block is included, it will be ran. So movie range, rating equals movie range dot terrible. If rating is equal to movie range dot terrible, again, it's just doing the same thing. Um, it's, if else, if this is true, then it'll just print this, right? If it's not true, then it'll, it'll print the best movie I've ever seen. If, if not, then it'll just be, you're just being a, uh, it wasn't either bad or good. So that's just one thing I was showing you guys. The important thing to remember about else is the check and stop. As soon as one of the conditions is found to be true, if the movie was terrible, we'll never move on to the testing and it will be tested. Ternary operator a shorthand of statement. Lastly, we can write a shorthand statement using what is known as ternary operator. This is a fancy word that simply means having three arguments. In practice, it means writing an if statement in a shorthand form. Let's start by looking at the simple if statement. So here is a great way to just use number values. Enter uh, integer mod value equals 20. Bool, if it's less than 10, then it's false. So here, if my value, if you type in, you know, a value that's like five, then it's true, right? Then exit. If you type in 20, then it would just be false. Or, 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 or yeah, 20, right? Because 20 would be greater than 10. Um, but the statement here, it just says that. Here we have a value and a boolean true and false called less called is less than 10. Using an if statement, we check if the value is less than 10 and assign the proper value to the boolean. However, this is taking up eight lines of code to do this simple task. We're constraining this down to just one line of code. So this is just a faster way of just doing it. You use this question mark. My value is less than 10. So if you have a value that's less than 10, if it's true or false here's the syntax always works variable equals condition to test question mark value if true semicolon value if false to view the code example go ahead and check it out lesson five project on github so this is one of the good questions right here five six lab if statements definitely work on your if statements uh, in this lesson, we're going to put everything we learned to get to today together while practicing uh, if statement scenarios. You work for the company World of Beer, which makes and sells high quality craft beer. Well, World of Beer lets customers shop online and will show, ship orders directly to their customer. World of Beer won't allow a customer under 21, so they need to implement logic that stops the customer from ordering if their profiles show they are under 21. Additionally, World of Beer offers customers a premium membership for a piece for a price if the customer has a premium membership they will get a special offer and discount on orders so this is something i worked before is just having um, an age um, limit so if the age is greater or less than then you're just going to have print either underage or legal age or over the age right so this is something that you guys are able to do uh, you're just going to use a lot of um, if statements which is not, it's not going to be bad. And then you're just going to write console line out, um, type in the number. And so this wouldn't really be that bad. And that's it for your five, six. Um,